Okay, we're going to get started today by just recalibrating the geometry. And the best way to start this out is to show you how to access the internal service menu for this and any other N-series Sony PVM monitor that you might be working on. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm having it on a different uh, line, one that's got nothing on it, no input into it right now, just so you can see on screen better um, the menu options. I'll go through that a little bit and then we'll pull up a test suite and use that test suite to calibrate. So this is your general normal menu, menu one, the normal menu when you press menu, that's what you're going to see. It's just this short menu with a few controls and that's it. And uh, you can change your aspect ratio, your RGB sync to sync on green if you need to. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to it for that. So there is, however, a way to get into the service menu, which is a sub menu inside of this that lets you make a lot more adjustments. So let's start the way to access that is to have nothing on screen simultaneously press menu plus enter and then that will come up and then you press enter once enter twice and it gets you to this the first thing you'll see is 001 destination and then some more numbers down here now this is the sub menu or the service menu whatever you want to call it this is this is where we are right now so to change this destination or this this 001 setting I need to hold down the menu button and go either up or down on the arrows so if I go up it's gonna bring it to the second setting and if I go down it'll bring it all the way down to the very last setting which is 103 so there's 103 different settings in there and then when you get to a setting that you want to make a change to press up or down to change the value on it. So once you change and enter your new value, if you want to write your data that you've changed, you need to press menu and enter together and it'll say save and then you press it again while well, that save is listed and you'll see, I don't know if you saw it there, but if you press menu and save and then press it again you'll see two musical notes and that means that your save has been written to the memory and then you don't have to go and make an adjustment again or it will save the adjustments. So now I'm going to change it over to RGB and we're going to use the 240p test suite to calibrate again for geometry. Okay so I've got my brightness turned down, I've got my test suite pulled up and I'm going to pull up some test patterns and one of the first test patterns I like to start with is the 256 by 224 grid pattern. Now to start my calibration, I want to make sure that I see every edge line in my picture of my grid here. So I can, there are some ish, spots on the corners where it is pushed into the actual bezel blind area, which is fine. But for the most part, I want to see these lines uh, before I finish with the geometry. Now this one is in really good condition so we're not going to have to really go in and make a lot of adjustments really at all to the geometry settings for like the pin cushion settings and other uh, linearity settings I will show you those settings but this one is just uh, pretty well adjusted already but this is what I'm shooting for to begin with is this uh, putting this grid pattern in the very center of my screen so I can see every edge and most of every corner and then I can make some adjustments from there. So if we go ahead now and we press our menu and enter together and get into our service menu. So there are some uh, adjustments now that we're running into that are our first actual uh, settings that we could change for geometry. For example, horizontal corner pin cushion settings horizontal pin amp settings, pin phase, size horizontal, vertical linearity, 
we've got a few settings for that size correction uh, 16 by 9 size our regular size our vertical center our angle our bow and then we've got some other random settings thrown in here that we will not be worried about but there is one more lower down here so uh, the horizontal centeredness you have to adjust the horizontal centeredness on this monitor for the specific input that you're using as far as 60 Hertz or PAL 50 Hertz so there's those two and then the RGB is what we'll be using and we'll actually be using 60 Hertz so that would be our example for us and then again if we wanted to make a change we'd go up or down on the arrows and then we'd write it by pressing menu and enter together twice so if we start here on our horizontal center and we have it on 60 Hertz RGB if I press up or down it's on 23 right now but if I press it to, you know this way it'll go that way and um, but that right there will adjust your horizontal centeredness and then if we move up in our menu items let me show you what the bow looks like if I were to increase that there's it's it's only goes up to the number 15 and then it resets back to zero so it's not a wide range of ability to change that but there is at least some ability to change that we've got our angle setting here which is the next one our vertical center okay you get the idea here vertical size and then 16 by 9 and then there's size correction side correction and linearity which will need different test patterns to go through the linearity settings so horizontal size is the same as vertical size you know you just increase it and it increases the size of your screen pin phase is something that we can show here so that's um, the, the actual angle of the screen and our pin amp which is going to be our corner pin cushion settings and this is our entire screen so this actually has a larger amount of adjustments you can make to that and then we'll move to corner pin amp which is just tighter controls on your corners not so much the whole entire screen just concentrating on the corners for the most part but you can go in here and look at some of these other settings these are going to be like co color controls most of these is color drives but sub brightness you can also change sub brightness in here in the middle of it and then sub contrast uh, sub chroma so there's a lot of adjustments inside this menu now what I'm going to do now is show you my preferred setting for this is to take this screen and make sure it's perfectly centered once I have it centered I'm going to slowly expand the screen out to the point where I am halfway between the red lines which is the edge line and then the red dots and that's going to be the same both vertically and horizontally so that way the red line and about uh, you know just a couple centimeters over that is going to actually be in our overscan area and it's not going to show up on our picture you know when we're running a program through either a video game or uh, anything else that we're running on screen through RGB so that would be about my desired horizontal size and then if I go to vertical size I'm gonna be slow to expand this one but I've got you know the line disappears pretty much the same time on the top and the bottom and everything else is looking very good on here so to again save we're gonna press menu and enter twice and then we're gonna get out of our service menu and check our results so to get out of the service menu while I have the service menu up, I'm going to press enter and it's going to go this raster center adjustment mode and then 
press enter again and then when nothing's on the screen we're going to press menu and enter one more time and it'll show us the RGB and our input and that just means we're back to our normal menu and we're out of service mode that's how we operate through that service menu let's just take a quick moment here while we've got the screens these screens pulled up to show off some of the settings this is our linearity and if we wanted to go through and make some linearity adjustments we could use those linearity settings in that service menu to make sure these are all rounded as possible and uh, positioned properly one of the other things you'll always want to check is just to make sure that you don't have any color purity by checking each color make sure every color is evenly showing you can always do this check for the color bars just to make sure everything looks fine there and um, the last thing I like to do is set it on the scroll test just to see that you're not having any problems with linearity or warping or screen tearing or really anything just that's a really good uh, backdrop to show what is going on throughout the entire screen and you can also see how we've expanded it to the point where a lot of the edge is in the overscan area which is the way it's intended to be that way we're not going to see any edges of imperfection on either the program end or on the edges that might be imperfect on our calibration uh, because again a lot of this is just due, due to magnetism and uh, we do have a lot of you know ability to calibrate it to a certain point but then there's also going to be a certain point of error that's automatically built into every CRT simply because it's an analog video system with a, a lot of magnetism that can be impacted by your environment that's really the entire uh, service menu run through. Hey, thanks again for watching today. I just want to let everybody know what I was using to calibrate. First, I was using a Super Nintendo with a ROM cart, and then I was using our Timio Urbina software, which is the 240p test suite. And this is the best uh, software you can use to calibrate any old CRT or really video display monitor anything that you need to make a adjustment to for either like color or even calibration for geometry this is really the best to use for like 240p and 480i and older analog video signals so I just want to let everybody know that that's what it is in case you don't know and you can just google 240p test suite and you will find uh, Junker HQ which is our Timio's website Big shout out to our Timio. He's a great guy and this software is incredible and it is open source and free so go make sure you download it and use it on whichever system you have capable to run the program on. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.